For half a century now, the Grand River Dam Authority's Robert S. Kerr Dam has served the state of Oklahoma by producing hydroelectricity, providing flood control, and holding back the waters of the Grand River to create scenic Lake Hudson. The 1964 completion of Kerr Dam, also known as the Markham Ferry Project, lifted GRDA into a new era. Not only did it double the number of GRDA hydroelectric facilities on the Grand River, but it would more than double GRDA's total generation capacity. While Pensacola Dam had a 96 megawatt capacity at the time, the new Kerr Dam had a capacity of 114 megawatts. However, getting the new facility from the drawing board to reality was a long process, going back many years before construction even began. On May 12, 1939, at a time when the construction of Pensacola Dam was still underway, the 17th Oklahoma Legislature authorized the construction of a second GRDA dam with the passage of House Bill 653. But before construction could begin, the United States Congress enacted the Flood Control Act on August 18, 1941. That act authorized the United States Army Corps of Engineers to construct the project. It would be another 13 years before GRDA finally received the green light to go forward with construction. On July 6, 1954, Congress enacted Public Law 476, which authorized GRDA to build the dam in accordance with the terms of the Federal Power Act and recommendations from the Corps. Two years later, Congress also approved $6.3 million for the work. GRDA obtained other funds through a $35 million bond issue in December 1961. That same month, the contract for construction of the powerhouse and dam was awarded to SOG of Texas for $9.8 million. A second GRDA dam on the Grand River was beginning to take shape. When GRDA was constructing Pensacola Dam between 1938 and 1940, engineers were already scouting possible sites for another dam further down the Grand River. Eventually, they settled on a location approximately two miles north of Locust Grove and eight miles southeast of Pryor. That spot, where the land sloped gently towards the river, was very near where the Markham family had operated a ferry to shuttle travelers across the Grand River along an important trading route. As early pioneers to the area in the 1840s, the family also established a ranch and general store, and the area eventually became known as Markham Prairie. So when engineers chose to build the dam at the historic site, Markham Ferry Project was a natural fit. 1962 was still brand new when GRDA held its official groundbreaking for the project on January 2nd. The customer community of Pryor was the site for most of the events of the day with a special luncheon sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce in the Grand Memorial Auditorium. There was also a special groundbreaking parade through downtown. And finally, at 3 p.m., the crowd moved out to the Markham Ferry construction site to witness the first shovel of dirt being moved. Ben Owens, who was then chairman of the GRDA board, called it a great and memorable day and asked the board to adopt a resolution of gratitude and thanks for the efforts of all those who had made the occasion possible. On the same day, the board voted to name the new dam after former Oklahoma governor and senator Robert S. Kerr, who had devoted much of his political career to developing Oklahoma's waterways and related water projects. The board also named the lake after longtime board member Wash E. Hudson. A Tulsa attorney, Hudson joined the GRDA board in 1955 and served until his death in January 1964 just before the dam's completion. Like Kerr, Hudson had devoted many years of his career to development of Grand River resources. The construction work that began on that cold January day in 1962 would carry through to spring 1964. Of course, stemming the river's flow so that construction could take place was the top priority early in the work. According to W.R. Hallway's book, A History of the Grand River Dam Authority, Contractors were lucky to be able to close off the river's flow in April 1962, since that month was usually a season of high flows for the river. However, that luck stayed in place through much of the construction. Hallway added that a period from October 1963 to February 1964 was the driest period for these months in the recorded history of the river. During construction, there were many different contracts and projects that had to be completed beyond just the powerhouse and dam structure itself that would make the project a reality. There was installation of turbines and generators, related power line construction, switchyard construction, construction of the control house we now know as the Energy Control Center, there was relocation of roads and bridges, clearing of timber in the reservoir area, construction of the dike around the town of Salina, and even cemetery relocations, plus other associated tasks that made the construction area a beehive of activity during those early years in the 1960s. Eventually, it all came together. 
By May of 1964, the dam's turbine generators were operational. Meanwhile, up on the bluff, the control house had also taken shape. Kerr Dam's existence would add more renewable electricity to the GRDA system, while the new control house would help the authority manage and deliver that power all across northeast Oklahoma. Altogether, the cost for construction of Robert S. Kerr Dam stood at roughly $25 million. The end of construction also marked the beginning of Lake Hudson and the expansion of recreational opportunities and flood control in the Grand River Valley. Hudson is a 12,000 surface acre reservoir with 200 miles of scenic shorelines stretching across the heart of Mays County. Though much smaller than its big sister Grand Lake, Hudson offers many of the same opportunities for property owners to live near the water's edge while giving all lake visitors plenty of room to boat, fish, ski, or just enjoy the lake waters. And if you're an angler, then you know that the lake is one of Oklahoma's premier fishing destinations, no matter what kind of fish you're hoping to land on your line. Together with Grand Lake and the WR Hallway Reservoir, which is located above the Salina Pump Storage Project, Hudson creates the 70,000 surface acres of lake waters under GRDA control. These waters are the foundation for a thriving recreation and tourism industry that has helped to transform the entire Grand River region and contribute to GRDA's positive economic impact all across the state. Today, several water districts also depend on Lake Hudson including the lake area communities of Salina, Locust Grove, and Adair. Even the city of Tulsa has a contract with GRDA to use Hudson's waters as a secondary supply. With Kerr Dam now in place, GRDA was able to once again harness the power of falling water and recapture valuable Oklahoma resources to put them back to work once again to produce Oklahoma power. The dam's existence also added another important flood control tool for the Grand River and Greater Arkansas River system in northeast Oklahoma. With its 17 floodgates, the facility has a total flood water discharge potential of nearly 600,000 cubic feet per second. Throughout its half century of service to Oklahoma, the dam has continued to meet the electric generation and flood control missions that first prompted its construction. Meanwhile, the control house atop the bluff, now known as the GRDA Energy Control Center, has expanded and developed over the years to meet the continuing needs of GRDA's sophisticated energy delivery system. The renewable electricity GRDA has created at Kerr Dam has helped spur economic development all across Oklahoma. Meanwhile, the flood control functions and recreational opportunities created by the lake have helped put the resources of the Grand River to work for countless Oklahomans. Of course, all of this is possible because of five decades worth of dedicated, skilled, team GRDA employees that have devoted their careers to caring for Kerr Dam and GRDA's hydroelectric operations. From the time Kerr Dam and the new control house were first envisioned, on through construction, and the time Bill Crawford was hired to be GRDA's first employee in the powerhouse, and even through today, the real successes of the last 50 years are the direct result of those who have spent their careers there keeping the GRDA power flowing. After a half century of service to Oklahoma, GRDA's Robert S. Kerr Dam continues to be a key part of the overall mission of electricity production, economic development, and environmental stewardship. Earlier this year, GRDA even completed a major upgrade of the four hydroelectric turbine units that have produced renewable electricity to power Oklahoma since 1964. While they may still look like they did in the past, they are now ready to serve Oklahoma well into the future. Today, Kerr Dam remains an integral part of GRDA's diverse generation portfolio that also includes coal, gas, wind, and of course other hydroelectricity sources. Together with the team GRDA members that put them to work, these are all important assets that will provide the power for progress to our Oklahoma neighbors for as long as the Grand River flows. Happy 50th anniversary to GRDA's Robert S. Kerr Dam. <laughs>